Hello, friend. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Today's video is an extreme. Everything's extreme on this channel. <laughs> closet declutter, organize, and transformation. The transformation on this closet is just wow. It is so super satisfying. This video is going to be so motivating. Plus, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of decluttering. These are things that What's I wish I knew front? before I started to declutter. Oh, a sock and a necklace. Always socks. Always socks. <laughs> oh, this goes this way. Wait, what? You know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't care. This is ridiculous. Jeez. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie dokie, friends. We are going to get right into today's video. No time to waste. We got a lot to do and a lot to get into. Out of any decluttering video I've ever done, this is probably the most important and informative video I've ever done. In today's video, we're going to discuss the do's and don'ts of decluttering that you need to know. So no matter where you are in your decluttering journey, I really hope that this is helpful. I hope you take something away from it. And I hope that it's super motivating. We are going to do an extreme. Everything's extreme on the Danny Ray Range YouTube channel. <laughs> we are going to do an extreme transformation, declutter, and organize on this closet. My daughter's closet is a, is a disaster. We're going to talk more about that later on. You're also going to want to stick around for when I put together a new organizing shelf. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It's going to be a good time. You're going to want to stick around for this. These one. are all of my dolls when I was young that my mom gave to me that I gave to Zoe. And I've talked about this a couple of times in the past. <laughs> Yep, everybody. Yeah, I, I, I've talked about this quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, but we've talked about these dolls in the past. And you guys can take the dolls. <laughs> I want them. Okay, so you don't want them. No. Okay, that's kind of what I figured. I just need my um, horses. And... I know your horse. So the dolls are more my issue. <laughs> Yeah, I got this So one. that's my mom's, and I don't know when that when she got that, but like, it was probably like the 90s, yeah. the 90s. It was the 90s. The 90s, and I think there's one up there, like there's that blue case that, that could go for a lot. I, my godmother is the one that got me most Mom, of these. Mom, can that blue Barbie doll go for a lot? Well, okay, the, the Barbie ones I'm going to keep. This is a this is a winter Barbie because I know I know that some of them are may be worth something, um, and others are not. Uh, the Barbie one, there we go. The the Barbie ones I think may be worth stuff, but I mean the packaging has already been opened. Yeah. And some of them, what's in here? This is just an empty box. I don't know. It's a surprise. Your face. Oh. It's a surprise of nothing. <laughs> it's no surprises. So we can recycle that. <laughs> I'm naturally a scattered hot mess. I bounce all over the place. Half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm super disorganized. So if I don't go into decluttering with a plan, it just makes the decluttering process harder and it prolongs it. So don't go into decluttering without a plan. Set goals. Uh, see what you want the space that you're decluttering to look like. The first thing I wanted to do was pull everything out. I wanted to see the space empty. I'm trying to group like items together because it makes it easier for, for when we declutter as well as organize our keep items. But I've already made a huge mistake. We're going to keep these ones. So I'll put these ones to the side. Okay, the rest, um, oh, I don't know what to do with them, you guys. Like, I'm so stumped on what to do. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is one that I'm, like, super stumped on. This is, this is an item. Here, I'm going to be logical here. Here's the deal. I talked about this in the Swedish death cleaning method where it's difficult to let go of stuff that it's difficult to let go of things that like a loved one has given you or maybe you've inherited and 
you feel guilty about letting those things go. You feel bad about it. Um, th the thing is, is that number one, it's an object. So it, it's, it's an object. Number two, if someone gave you something, they're giving it to you because they're, they're hoping that you'll like it and enjoy it. And if you're not using it, you don't like it, you don't enjoy it. It's just sitting and collecting dust. Then number one, are you really honoring the, if it's something you've inherited, are you really honoring that person by just kind of letting it sit and collect dust? You know what I mean? When it could be someone else may find immense joy from this item if you were to let it go and donate it. Uh, also, if, it, if there's an item in your possession that you just don't want anymore, it's yours now. It's not that person's anymore, it's yours. Now, a lot of times, um, sometimes I'll suggest, you know, if you do get stuff that you don't want, you and you're afraid like, that person is going to come over to your house and they're not going to see this gift that they gave you or this thing that they've given you. Um, you feel like that it's going to offend them or hurt their feelings. What you could do is keep it out for a short period of time. And then after, you know, a, a period of time, you can slowly start letting that thing go or things go because eventually people are going to forget about it. I don't remember pretty much almost anything that I've given anyone except unless it was something recent. If I gave something, I can't tell you how many, how much stuff I've given my mom that I've gifted to her that we found over at her house decluttering that she doesn't use that I completely forgot about. It's not, and honestly, personally for me, it's not going to offend me or hurt my feelings of someone that I, if I gave someone something that they don't like it, that they get rid of it. It's not going to offend me. That's me personally. Everyone's different. Um, or you can just let the item go. It's yours now. You can do with what you you can do whatever you want with it. It's yours now. So it is easier said than done, though. I'm not gonna lie. Like these dolls have sentimental value, so that makes it harder for me. Like it's not just something I don't like. It's something that has sentimental. I have a sentimental attachment to it. So yeah, I can I can sit here and go on and on about it. But the truth of the matter is, <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. Decluttering <laughs> items that I have an emotional attachment to, which it's very easy for me to create an emotional attachment to objects. I tend to place a person, place, or memory with an object very easily. That has been the biggest obstacle for me to overcome. I'm still trying to overcome that. I've made a lot of mistakes when it comes to decluttering sentimental items, and it's hindered me from moving forward in my decluttering journey. But I've come to realize there's two different types, two different categories of sentimental items. This is really important for us to go through because this is going to help you decide on what to keep and let go of. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. Uh, I got to know which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to let go of. Okay. I know books are a big deal, but <laughs> let's just go through them. <laughs> okay. So out of that pile, we're getting rid of this. <laughs> so it's a start. <laughs> On to the next pile. Now, this one, her grandmother, Ian's mom, who passed away years ago, gave her this book. So it has sentimental attachment. We don't let these ones go. There's also some books um, that my, my mother-in-law um, narrated. She read it. Re the book records her voice reading the book. It's really cool. I showed that in the last Swedish death cleaning method uh, video that I did. And it was emotional listening to it because I haven't heard her voice in so many years. Those are books we don't let go of. And um, she made one for Lucas and one for Zoe and they're each. I have not created a memory bin for them. That is going to be a future project in a future video, but they do have a under the bed storage bag with all of their memorabilia in it. We just got to organize it a little bit better. Okay, so oh, let's go through. So I'm going to go through this with her. Uh, books are a big deal. Um, you know, both my kids actually really enjoy reading. Uh, Zoe loves to read and um, you know, she loves art. She loves anything art related. She loves to read. So books are really difficult for her to let go of, but um, we got a lot <laughs> and I, I have more down there. So I'm going to go through this with her. We're going to go through this together um, and then I'll let you know which ones she decided to let go of out of this pile. 
so far this is great i think this is fantastic one more pile i apologize that the voiceover is a little choppy in today's video i've had a start stop start stop so i'm gonna talk a little bit more about the books the dolls and this drawer that i'm gonna organize here in just a second we're gonna talk more about that a little later on but i first wanted to mention uh two different types of sentimental items so this is what i've noticed the one type of sentimental items is the ones that bring value joy and purpose the other type is the ones that don't. We're just keeping it because we feel like we have to or we should. Maybe it's because it's an item that a loved one gave you or you've inherited and you feel like you have to keep it, like you should keep it. And those items may even be items that you hate or maybe they're even a burden to you, but you still feel like you have to keep it. Being able to figure out what type of category your sentimental items are is going to help you make a decision on what to keep and what to let go of. You know, this is easier said than done. Trust me, I've been there before. And a lot of times when I'm stumped on an item like the dolls or even the books, I have to come back to it later because no matter how big of an area or small of an area you're decluttering, the decluttering process can be time consuming, tedious, emotional. You already have so much going on as it is that sometimes you just need to come back to an item when it's just that item you're focusing on. Please. No. No, I'm begging you. No. <laughs> I got this from the Goodwill for ten dollars, or maybe even less. I got that for two years. I th I think when did I? Oh, how much? I think it was like maybe it was between eight and ten dollars. And she made it pretty. She made it pretty. I tried washing it off. Yeah, it's never gonna come off. <laughs> no, it will. Oh. I that can come off by sanitizer. Oh. Yeah, I tried doing that, but it like just I just I you know I really really <laughs> okay. <laughs> That horse cracks me up every time I see it. <laughs> she loves it. She got that when she was five or six. So she's had it longer than two years because she's eight now. And she's made it pretty a couple of times. So when she was much younger, but she loves it. She uses it. She won't part with it. And that's cool. Also, uh, that little mermaid blanket was mine when I was a kid and Zoe uses it still. What's in the front? Oh, a sock and a necklace. So... Always sucks. Always sucks. <laughs> Always sucks. I wanted to show you organizing the junk drawer because if you're looking for an inexpensive, easy way to organize your drawers, you can use some of the toy holders that uh, toys come in. So like, for example, with Melissa and Doug toys, they come with really cool holders sometimes. I've used one of them to organize my makeup drawer. So instead of using that big piece of wood in the junk drawer to hold the pens and pencils, I took one of her toy organizers. It was actually a journaling organizer to organize the junk drawer. Good to go. It works great. <laughs> Doesn't it look so nice? It looks so wonderful just being empty. Look at that. It's real good to have this completely empty. <laughs> okay, let's get this clean. And then grandma had her on a monthly subscription. It's called the Zoo Box. And my son was on a monthly subscription. It was called, um, why can I never remember? It's like a chef kit um, of cooking stuff. Uh, it was really cool. So was the Zoo Box. The problem is, is that the subscription boxes were um, accumulating a lot of stuff. So I, no more. <laughs> and my mom canceled the subscriptions. We literally had these subscriptions for like, I don't know, maybe a year. And the kids loved them. So that's why I was like, okay, fine. Okay, cool. I, I was okay with it. She asked me, my mom asked me before she did it. And I said, yes. Um, I didn't know that it was going to accumulate that much stuff for cooking stuff in my kitchen. And uh, with her zoo boxes, she'd get a stuffy every single zoo box. Some were really small, some were this size. Yeah, this was from a zoo box. So um, she already had a lot of stuffies to begin with. Stuffies are hard for her to let go of. Her horses are hard for her to let go of. Her to or, 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 uh, horses, animals, and stuffies are her hardest items. Um, 
We have let go of some stuffies in the past, not a whole lot, but some. There's two things. Uh, this one stayed in the cheapers. This one stayed in the four season for a long time and it was kind of forgotten about it. And then in here, she has this box, which this was my heater in the four season box. I used it. Yeah. Um, so, so much. I apologize if I didn't mention this earlier in today's video. I have mentioned this before, many times before on the channel, that I don't show the kids on my channel. So it's very difficult. It's challenging to show them decluttering and cleaning when they're not on the channel. So there's a lot of decluttering. There's a lot of work that's being done off camera. Zoe is doing a lot of decluttering off camera. She is going through her things. The kids make the final decisions on all of their stuff. So they make the decision on whether they want to keep something or let it go. But I did want to show some of the decluttering process. So I am holding up some of her stuff and she's making the final decisions on it. But it is so incredibly important that when you're decluttering, you are physically going through your belongings and making those final decisions. So she is doing that off camera as well. In the past, um, Zoe has decluttered. Uh, they were littler piles, uh, smaller decluttering piles. But no matter how small you declutter or how big you declutter, progress is progress. Any progress is amazing progress and you should be so proud of yourself. Zoe's done an incredible job decluttering in the past, but she did an amazing job decluttering in today's video. She let go of more stuff than she's ever let go of before. And I noticed that the older she gets and the more she declutters, the easier it becomes, the quicker the decision making becomes. Your dolls have fingers. Oh one, oh, one of them doesn't? Yeah. And that's true for anyone. The more that you declutter, decluttering really is like a muscle. The more that you declutter, the bigger that decluttering muscle gets and the easier it becomes. But Zoe has also had a, a difficult time letting go of her things. She has three categories of items that are very hard for her to let go of. That's her stuffies, her toy animals, and her toy horses. And that's the majority of her stuff. So it's been a slower process. Um, when Zoe declutters, usually all of it goes. It's gone. It's out of here. Um, she doesn't usually second guess herself. But for whatever reason, with stuffed animals... She second she's she has second guessed herself before in the past. So there are some stuffed animals that I'm placing in this donation bag that she has placed in the donation pile before and has second guessed herself and taken it out. Today, however, she did not second guess herself. She officially let these items go. Now, at the end of today's video, I'm going to show you everything that was decluttered except the bag of stuffies. So while I was banging all that stuff up, uh, I also had to run to the grocery store. So before I went to the grocery store, I, I went to the donation center and I dropped off that bag of stuffed animals. So that is gone. I just wanted to get that out of there. In the living room, we went through a tub of toys. And again, as I'm pulling things out, I'm trying to group like items together. So on the floor were a bunch of little piles. One of those piles were under the coffee table. Those were all toys that were decluttered, that Zoe decluttered from the toy tub. All the other little piles were uh, like items grouped together. And again, it just made it so much easier to organize when it was time to organize. Another thing that I've mentioned a thousand times before on the channel, I know I've said this so many times, but it's so important. When you're starting to declutter, especially in the beginning of your decluttering journey, don't attempt to declutter your whole house at once or a large area at once. I cannot tell you how many times in the beginning of my journey, now that I'm a couple years in, I'm okay with decluttering large areas. I can, I can handle that now. But in the, in the beginning of my decluttering journey, I can't tell you how many times I would take on a large area like my kitchen. And I was so overwhelmed so stressed that it almost pushed me in the opposite direction. I wanted to just stop and give up. 
I know sometimes when you're decluttering and you're starting to see the results of it, you see the progress. It almost like for me, it was addicting. Like I just wanted to hurry up and declutter my whole house at once. But by rushing like that and taking on too large of areas, it you're adding additional stress and pressure to a potentially already stressful situation. So you want to start small. Start with a drawer. Start with a cabinet. Give yourself enough time to finish that project. You know, there's been times where I didn't give myself enough uninterrupted time to finish a project, and I would get more scattered than I already am. Is this here? Is it not labeled? I don't know. You gotta be kidding me. I have made a shelf. Yeah. I sure did. That deserves a Fruit Loop break. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Okay, now that I've enjoyed my Fruit Loops, um, we shall continue. <laughs> Where's my there it is. I need Thor's hammer <laughs> to get me through this. Where's Loki? <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Natalie Portman was quite the lucky lady. That is for sure. <laughs> I, I am assuming that I'm doing this correctly. Oh, this goes this way. Wait, what? the directions correctly because it was pretty clear there oh yeah and you were so proud of yourself for making a unfinished shelf Really? 
Who needs Thor's hammer when I got Thor's nub? <laughs> Two light bulbs just went off right here. One, I realized what I just said. <laughs> Two, why am I using this and not a real hammer? I... <laughs> All right. Just get in your home. Get in your home. Go home. Why is this one slanting? Like, I don't understand. Like, it's going to drive me nuts. It's like it's going this way. Why? Like, oh my gosh, why? Okay. Why? I don't want to keep like hammering it in. It's like, going oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I don't ever, ever want to make something like that again. I will never buy this again. <laughs> Uh, I, I really do like it. I think for the price point, it's really good. Um, I got it for $29, something like that. By the way, it's nighttime. I'm in my pajamas. Uh, we are going to go into day two, but, um, I basically finished this in a day and a half, which I was actually shocked about, but, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, start organizing uh some of the st some of her toys in the closet some of her things in here uh those uh fabric cubed bins were from down in my basement in the laundry room area got them from dollar tree um you want to watch out when you're getting those bins at dollar tree because some of them uh are really flimsy but there's some that say heavier duty on them that's those ones these ones said heavier duty and they were the same price as the flimsy ones. They were a buck 25 each. So I really liked them, but they weren't working down in the basement. They, they just, it, it wasn't cutting it in the laundry room area. I got to figure out something else. So I wanted to use it for something. And that's what that, you know, organizer in the closet is for, I think. I mean, that's, I think what it's made for is those cubed. Well, at least it looks really good. We are on day two. I figured since I'm in here, I might as well organize her vanity, declutter, and organize that. There really wasn't anything to declutter. Uh, it, uh, well, there were some things, but it was like garbage recycling stuff. Uh, I really just wanted to organize it. I also cleaned her room. I deep cleaned it. I just figured since I'm in here doing all of this to the closet, I might as well just do everything to the room. But uh, it looks fantastic, by the way. But uh, yeah, that was a nightmare. That was an absolute nightmare. I laughed so hard my sides hurt when I was editing that part. I'm not kidding. The the Thor's nub that had me, I was done. I was rolling on the floor. Um, me falling on myself, literally on myself, how many times? Uh, in tears, crying from laughter. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done or seen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, it is working very well. Uh, I really do like it. Like I said, it was $29, something like that off of Amazon, but that wasn't the original price. I had an additional, must've been on sale, must've had a coupon or something. Cause, uh, I think it's like, I don't quote me on this. I'll have to look it up. I'll, 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 I'll put the price up right now with the actual prices, but, um, I will never make one again. So I have a couple more pages of notes to get to, and I'm not going to be able to get to all of it <laughs> because I talk too much. So I will be making another video like this uh, soon, and I'll go through all of the other things that I wanted to get to. But uh, I did want to end today's video with a couple of things. One, I should have talked about this way earlier in today's video. I almost forgot why this closet was such a disaster. So uh in the spring summertime, Zoe usually stores all of her toys in the four season. So it's a four season porch. It's an addition to the house. There's uh, large cabinets in that room. So we store a lot of her toys in one of those cabinets. But when it starts to get colder out, we bring her toys back into her room. And in the last video, it was a whole house deep clean, declutter, and organize. I remember when I was done. 
And I was looking at the house. I was like, one, it looks really bare because I took all of, you know, I I've had holiday seasonal decor up since August. And then after the new year, I took it all down. So it looked really bare, <laughs> but it looks really good. And I remember, you know, telling my husband, wow, the house looks great, but there's a couple of areas around the house that are driving me nuts. And her closet was one of them. <laughs> so because she had all of her toys back uh, in her room in and in front of the closet, it just, it was too much. It just looked like a disaster. So, and Zoe was ready to declutter. You know, the more that I declutter and the more minimal my home looks, the better it feels, the better it looks. It's calmer, it's more peaceful, it's relaxing. And, you know, myself and my family, we, we love that about our house, but we also want our rooms to look and feel that way too. And Zoe was ready to, you know, declutter. The last tip that I'm going to mention in today's video is actually something that I've done before in the past. Not a whole lot, but it has happened before is to not get rid of things that you actually need. Before I started my decluttering journey, I would fill every empty space. If there was an empty space, I was sure to fill it. <laughs> I mean, I wanted options in that empty space. I don't know what it is that I had this need to fill an empty space, but I had to do it. And when I overcame that obstacle, that hurdle, when I really started to declutter and I started to see a lot of progress in my home, I started to get what I call declutter happy. <laughs> I was really declutter happy. I wanted to go through my whole house as quickly as I could and get rid of everything. The problem with doing that, being declutter happy and also rushing, is that sometimes we accidentally get rid of things that we actually need. And I've done it before. I mean, listen, it's it may happen in your decluttering journey where, okay, you get rid of something that you actually needed, then you have to replace it. It's okay. I mean, it happens. You'll learn from it. I, I learn from every time I declutter, I either have a breakthrough moment or I learn something new about myself. So it happens. Uh, don't, don't beat yourself up over it, but, uh, you know, just slow down, pace yourself. Don't rush yourself. Can't say this enough. The decluttering process can take a long time. This has taken me years to get my home to where it is today. Uh, it isn't going to happen overnight. So, you know, you don't want to rush yourself. You don't want to get declutter happy and get rid of things that you actually need. Wow. The before and after of this closet is so super satisfying. This is so much better. It looks so good. It's so organized. Just wow. <laughs> Zoe did such an amazing job decluttering in today's video. I am so proud of her. You're going to see uh, a big pile of stuff that she decluttered in just a moment. But this is awesome. This is wonderful. But uh, really, really quickly, I just wanted to go back to sentimental items, hard items. This is important because I've done this so many times before. But when you do come across a hard item, don't get stuck in the purging process. Put it to the side. Come back to it at a later date. When you're in the middle of decluttering an area, your focus is heavily on the area that you're decluttering. Your, your focus isn't going to be on one item or a couple of items. So if you put it to the side, come back to it later, you can have your full attention, all of your focus on that one item and make a decision that you'll be happy with. But that is it for today's video, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that it was motivating. And I just really hope you liked it. Thank you so much for being here with me. I love and appreciate you so much. And we will, oh, by the way, basement video is coming. We're still working on it. So I just wanted to let you know that is coming. We're still working on it. But I got a bunch of other fun videos coming to the channel. So anyway, we will talk to you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Oh, by the way, <laughs> we decluttered Thor's nub. <laughs> <laughs>